On April 17th to 19th, 2009, Trinidad and Tobago was scheduled to host the 5th Summit of the Americas. This is the first time such an event is being held in a Caribbean country, and as a result, the government of Trinidad and Tobago has put several security measures in place to maximize the security for the visiting delegates and minimize the inconvenience to the members of the public. Our focus is to monitor the successful preparation, planning and execution of the security arrangements in order to achieve a safe and secure fifth summit of the Americas. To achieve this, a national secretariat was established to coordinate the technical and logistical arrangements. This secretariat included members of the Trinidad and Tobago Defense Force, the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service, and other CARICOM and international agencies. A subcommittee was formed from the various arms of the protective services to take charge of formulating and implementing security arrangements. This committee, the Operation Planning and Coordinating Staff, was headed by the Gold Commander, Assistant Commissioner of Police, Steve Waldron and Lieutenant Colonel Kenrick Mirage, Commander of the Joint Interagency Multinational Task Force. Training was implemented to ensure a secure and safe environment for the successful hosting of the 5th Summit of the Americas. This training played an integral part in preparing the security forces for this event. At this point in time, I'd like to say that we are ready. Security forces are ready to execute their plans for this summit. We will certainly be making, taking the, the decisive action because we want to ensure that we have our CARICOM brothers and sisters in the right frame of mind to embark not only on operations when we commence um, in a couple of weeks' time, but to ensure that during the preparations that you are properly taken care of. Police officers and soldiers from several OAS member states arrived in Trinidad and Tobago in order to assist local officers in maintaining law and order during the summit period. On arrival at the Defense Force Air Guard Base at Piarco, 
The different troops were welcomed by ACP Waldron and Lieutenant Colonel Mirage. I now take this opportunity on behalf of the government of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago to warmly welcome you to our shows. Of course, you know why you're here, and it's to support our local forces in our holding of the fifth summit of the Americas. And this is just one of the ways, again, that we're going to build ourselves as a unified region and support something that is very major. It's a, very, it's a major international event, and it demands, really, the highest levels of security. And inherent in that is the highest levels of professionalism and competence among our CARICOM brothers and sisters. Several briefings were held during which the visiting officers were addressed and told of the duties they were expected to perform. Your means of operation will be guided within the Visiting Forces Act in that you'll have the same powers, responsibilities and duties like any one of the local forces have. Local and regional officers were trained in crowd control, VIP protection, traffic management, air, land, and sea surveillance, amongst many other operational skills. Foreign officers worked alongside their local counterparts during several dry runs conducted throughout the country. These dry runs were carried out in order to determine beforehand any problems which could possibly be encountered during the actual summit days. If one was to use the old adage that prior preparation and planning prevents poor performance, you'll understand why it is necessary to test all our systems, all our plans, our command and control elements, our communications, to ensure that we have everything right on the day in question. Of course, it was not all hard work for visiting troops. They had the opportunity to relax at their different hotels, to go shopping at local malls, and of course, no trip to TNT would be complete without a visit to at least one of our beautiful beaches. These officers had a great time during their day at Maracas Bay. We are now on the eve of the fifth summit of the Americas. I'm confident as Minister of National Security and Chair of the Strategic Command Group that everything is in place for us to host a safe and secure fifth summit. As part of the traffic strategies implemented, traffic was redirected and in some areas restricted between the Piaco International Airport and the Hyatt Regency Hotel. This was to facilitate the secure and timely arrival of the delegates attending the summit. CARICOM, as well as local law enforcement troops, was strategically posted along the roadways to ensure a free flow of motor vehicular traffic. The delegates arrived for the opening ceremony safely around 5 p.m. and were warmly greeted by the sweet, melodious sound of Trinidad and Tobago's national instrument, the steel pan. As the delegates enjoyed the opening ceremony, security forces were on high alert, preserving a safe environment in and around the conference center. During the summit days, 
several persons and vehicles were searched by security forces. At checkpoints set up to allow entry into the yellow, blue and red zones within Port of Spain. This further enhanced the already heightened security arrangements implemented. One of the main responsibilities entrusted to the security forces was the safe conveyance of the spouses from their hotels in Port of Spain to one of the island's most naturally preserved tourist attractions, the Wild Fowl Trust, located in the southern part of Trinidad. The spouses had an enjoyable time and safely returned to Port of Spain via the water taxi under the watchful eyes of the Coast Guard. As the delegates continued their deliberation at the conference center, security was maintained by the Joint Interagency Multinational Task Force throughout the country. The Fifth Summit of the Americas officially concluded on the 19th of April 2009 without any major incidents. Local and international troops united over this tense period and would forever be remembered as securing a legacy. Because of the co cooperation we have had from the local and visiting forces, we can proudly boast that we have had no major incidents whatsoever and it worked exceptionally well. There were no glitches at all. We thank you very, very much for the assistance that you brought to us. And I want to thank you all for coming, thank the, the governments of um, your respective countries um, for agreeing to support the effort, the CARICOM effort. Um, we have done this, of course, many times in the past. We have operated as a unified, um, cohesive CARICOM force in the past in many ways. 